family escaped their burning home overnight. What San Antonio firefighters think started this? Plus, if one organization gets their way, they could start building the world's tallest flagpole, taller than America's tallest building. David Sears has details on the plans and what's behind the idea. And coming right up, we are in downtown San Antonio to get ready to give you a sneak peek of the floats that are going to be hitting the water for this year's Texas Cavaliers River Parade. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, March 31st, first day of Fiesta. It's also Jalapeno Earring Day. <laughs> Just in case you missed the memo, right? <laughs> yeah, happy Fiesta, happy Thursday. Thanks for joining us today. We're very excited about Fiesta. I have my Fiesta themed dress and your Fiesta themed tie. We didn't even plan this and no. it worked out pretty good, but uh, happy Fiesta, everybody. We are finally back, back to reality, back to normal, back to in-person events. And we're so excited about that. Even more excited about the possibility of some fantastic weather for the kickoff of yeah, Fiesta. Yeah, it looks like it's working out. Let's look outside with live cam. You know, we started off a little chilly, but it's looking beautiful. Oh, that's okay. I mean, this, this is, this is good Fiesta weather, right? I mean, we've got sunny skies. It was a little chilly this morning. Yes, we did get down to 47 here in San Antonio. Antonio, but hey, it's going to turn into a really nice afternoon. 58 degrees right now, so those temperatures have already turned a corner. 47 Kerrville, 52 in the Valley, 62 down there in Katua. Sunny skies for everybody. Next couple days, we'll be in the 80s. A little windy tomorrow. I know we're tired of the wind, but it does come back tomorrow. 84. 87 Saturday, a little bit more humidity. And then next week, we do have some changes, maybe some rain chances coming up. We'll talk about that a little later. In the meantime, pollen count is in. Oak is at 260, it's moderate. It's down a little bit from yesterday. Molds, juniper, hackberry are all there, but uh, not, uh, not really that bad of a pollen count. We'll see uh, how things turn out as we get into April. Fiesta, Fiesta tonight, 4 p.m. At 4 p.m. will be around 80 degrees, 7 p.m., 78, 65 at 10 p.m. I mean, again, that is, that is great weather. That sunset's around 752, if you're curious. Uh, we've got uh, some more Fiesta forecast for you coming up. And we'll talk about what we can expect next week with a potential for some thunderstorms. That's coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. We have some accidents to report. 281 at Isom right now appears to be affecting the southbound lanes there at that ramp. We've got SAPD out there on the scene. We also have this with some cones out there at 90 at Couples. I'm also seeing some slowdowns. 281 near the downtown area. Uh, another accident working and there is the slowdown. Yep, 281 at Grace and that appears to be affecting the northbound lanes of 281. All right, we'll keep you posted and for now let's look at today's 9 at 9. Earlier this week, Moscow announced plans to scale back its military activity around Kyiv, but Ukrainian authorities say the city continues to be battered by explosions. The Pentagon says less than 20% of Russian forces have been removed from Kyiv. President Joe Biden is preparing to order the release of up to a million barrels of oil per day from the nation's oil reserve. Biden is expected to make the announcement sometime today. The duration of the release has not been finalized, but could last for several months. If you're planning a summer vacation, there's good news about COVID. The CDC now says cruises do not pose an increased travel risk, but they recommend checking out individual ship health guidelines and getting fully vaccinated first. Meanwhile, 21 states are suing the Biden administration to end the transportation mask mandate before it expires April 18th. Amid these changes, experts say be ready for the Omicron subvariant to increase cases. The Biden administration is taking steps to give Americans more access to COVID-19 information. It is the COVID.gov website, which provides data on vaccines, tests, treatments, and masks. You can also find details on traveling, such as hotspot areas and local requirements if you plan to go on vacation soon. The resignation of Republican Congressman Jeff Fortenberry takes effect today after he was convicted by a California jury of lying to federal authorities about an illegal campaign donation from a foreign national. Fortenberry represented Nebraska. He was indicted in October after authorities say he lied to FBI agents in two interviews about his knowledge of an illegal $30,000 contribution to his campaign from a Nigerian billionaire. The family of Bruce Willis revealed he is suffering from a medical condition known as aphasia that's affecting his cognitive abilities, forcing him to take a break from acting. The Mayo Clinic says aphasia is a condition that impacts the ability to communicate and can be caused by a stroke, 
head injury, a brain tumor, or a disease. Apple reportedly looking for new suppliers for memory chips for iPhones after problems with a key Japanese partner. Bloomberg says for the first time, Apple may turn to a Chinese company. One of Apple's partners in Japan reported contamination at two of its plants, forcing production cuts. A company best known for its vacuums and hair dryers releasing its Dyson Zone, which is a set of noise-canceling headphones that also provide purified airflow to the nose and mouth. So far, there's no word on how much these headphones will cost, but they are expected to be officially launched this fall. People are ready to say I do after two years of uncertainty with the pandemic. As many as 2.6 million weddings are expected to take place this year, according to a new report out by the wedding planning site, The Knot. As far as when is the busiest time to get married, The Knot found that October was the most popular month, with October 22nd being the most popular date. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Top stories are following today. San Antonio fire investigators are trying to determine the cause of a house fire that destroyed a home on the city's far north side early this morning. The fire was called in around 1230 a.m. at a home in the 15,100 block of Rock River Street, not far from Loop 1604 and Bulverde Road. Firefighters managed to get the fire under control quickly and without incident. It still did plenty of damage, though. Fire officials said a man, a woman, and a dog were all able to get out of the home safely. At this time, the cause of the fire is not known. A fire investigation team is now trying to figure out exactly what started it. And San Antonio police say three people are in the hospital and two suspects are detained this morning after a shooting at an apartment complex on the west side. Now, the shooting happened around 8 last night in the 300 block of Kaya Street. Uh, San Antonio police say officers arrived at the scene to find a woman, a man, and a 14-year-old with gunshot wounds. They were taken to a hospital by EMS and are in stable condition. Officers were able to gather suspect information and two suspects were detained. Police say the shooting appears to have started out as a fight outside of that complex. And scary moments for a man after San Antonio police say he was shot during an attempted robbery on the northeast side overnight. It happened around 1130 p.m. near the 4400 block of Walsham Road and near Austin Highway. Police say the man in his 50s was walking in a parking lot outside an apartment complex when a man approached him with a gun and demanded money. Police say that suspect then shot the victim in the arm. Victim was able to get into his car to drive for help. He was taken to a hospital in stable condition. That suspect is still on the loose at last check. In your other morning headlines, Chris Rock back on stage for the first time since he got slapped by Will Smith at the Oscars Sunday night. And border restrictions being lifted could cause some major problems. And cooking oil powering an aircraft and the world's tallest flagpole. Okay, well, David Sears is here to explain all of this this morning. Yeah, what's that all about, David Sears? The flagpole is a tribute to veterans. Oh, oh fantastic. Okay. We'll have that for you in just a second. But first, let's start with this. Once again, as Mark just said, Chris Rock was back on stage last night. For the first time, he got slapped at the Oscars. He was in Boston performing two shows last night, and he was greeted with a standing ovation. He even got emotional for a moment. He actually talked about the incident but it really didn't seem to be a part of his act, at least not yet. How was your weekend? I don't have like a bunch of about what happened. I'm still kind of processing what happened. So at some point, I'll talk about this. He wiped away some tears. He was smiling, but you could tell that he was really overcome by the moment. Yeah, that entertainment producer was actually in the audience. There was a tense moment when somebody in the audience actually started heckling Rock. Rock actually got a little nervous about the guy, but that person was removed. In the meantime, the Academy has apologized to Rock. They are conducting disciplinary proceedings into the incident. They even admitted that they asked Smith to leave after he slapped Rock, but Smith refused. So far, they have not decided on a punishment for Smith. They could sanction him or even expel him, but chances are they're not going to take away his Oscar. The Department of Homeland Security preparing for a huge number of illegal border crossings in May if the administration goes through with their plan to end Title 42. That was the measure that blocked a lot of immigrants seeking asylum from crossing the border because of health concerns during the pandemic. But according to three officials, it will end next month. The Biden administration has been under a lot of pressure to end that border restriction when it comes to health concerns. That decision is expected to be announced sometime in the next few days. It is described as cooking oil 
and it is used to help keep airplanes in the air, believe it or not. Airbus, the builder of the A380, says it has completed two trial flights, both powered by cooking oil. Those flights were in France. The second flight was just this past Tuesday. The fuel is SAF, a sustainable aviation fuel, mostly made up of cooking oil and waste fats. Airbus has already tested the oil on two other aircraft. It is hoping to get the fuel certified by the end of the decade. The fuel is already being used in limited amounts by some airlines. One of the reasons they developed this grade of SAF, they claim it is carbon neutral because the CO2 is absorbed by the organic ingredients are being grown. One major drawback, it ain't cheap. So next time you fry some fries in your fryer, collect the oil and uh, no, don't take it to the airport. <laughs> do not do that. Not yet, anyway. Although, if you can sell it, that'd be a pretty good deal. All right. It may work out. The organization Reese Across America are now going to new heights for our veterans, literally. They are in the planning stages of building the tallest flagpole in America that will fly the biggest flag in America. They want to build an entire park around the flagpole in Columbia Falls, Maine. The park will honor all of the country's over 24 million veterans. It will symbolize the sacrifice they made to protect our freedoms. The pole will be 1,461 feet tall, but it will stand on a hill, making it reach 1,776 feet above sea level. Taller than the Empire State Building, there will be two observation decks, one at the very top. The flag will be about the size of one and a half football fields. There will be wall parks with all veterans named etched on those 55 parks. There will be an entrance that will include shops, hotels, 4,000 feet, a 4,000 seat venue. And there is a specific reason why flags across America pick this particular spot. What makes it important, I think, is that it's right in the uh, flight path of the planes that go back and forth overseas. This pole is going to be flying the last flag that they'll see. Also, it's the first flag they'll see when they come home. Pretty significant when you mm -hmm. consider that flag and what it represents. All the veterans. I think it's going to be amazing for people to go see all the veterans that have served. Their names are going to be etched on one of 55 walls throughout this whole park. They've already got a lot of support from uh, from uh, Congress people up there, so that's, sure. that's a good thing. So. Columbia Falls, Maine. Uh, the artist yeah. renderings, I mean, make it look like it's worth a trip for yeah. sure. Plus, that's Beautiful. just a pretty part of the country. Yeah. Exactly. So I think, uh, and and it's not a, it's it's kind of an open area, mm -hmm. and there's not a whole lot of uh, I guess there's not too many cities that are close by. Yeah. So it's kind of wide open. Back to cooking oil for jet fuel. Yeah. Can you imagine uh -huh. be like, is there a Long John Silver's nearby? Oh no, yeah. we're near the airport. Oh my so. god! <laughs> it's it could happen though. Or it's it sounds like I mean it's it's cooking. It sounds like something that could be processed and just taken right to the airport. Yeah. Or somebody shows up at the airport. Well, David Sears said, said "Bring your oil." <laughs> Yeah. Where do we put this well, stuff? Well, you know, you, you can't don't. get through security if it's over, what, three, three and a half hours. <laughs> That's, so, true. You know, that, that That's true. That is true. A, a small little right. container of cooking oil. All right. <laughs> Will this help? <laughs> yes. Thank you, David. See you in a bit. 9-11 right now, 57 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. We are getting a look at how the increase in crime here in San Antonio includes teenagers. Details on what's being done to keep juveniles out of jail. But first, a preview of the Texas Cavaliers Riverboat Parade. Faces of Fiesta is powered by Silverado and your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Hi, I'm Mackenzie Tijirina and I'm La Reina de la Feria de las Flores 2022. Viva Fiesta! Meet this year's Reina de la Feria de las Flores. I attend Antonian College Preparatory High School. I'm a senior there. I'm going to go play volleyball at the University of Texas at El Paso. Mackenzie comes from a long line of Fiesta royalty. I've been in Fiesta all my life, basically, born and raised in San Antonio. My mom was a past feria queen. My grandpa was Rafael 48. My uncle was Rafael 70, and my cousin was also a feria queen. She enjoys the visits to area schools with El Rafael and brings her message to the kids. I hope to get my message across to all the kids about following their dreams and doing whatever their heart wants, but also giving scholarships to kids around San Antonio. I raised over $65,000 and I hope to give all that money back to kids and get them to college. And when she's not reigning as queen. I play volleyball. I've been playing since I've been in second grade. So that's pretty much a lot of what I do. I love volunteering. 
I've also done a lot through Antonian. I founded a sewing club, um, making blankets and hats. We donate a lot of stuff to different hospitals and organizations around San Antonio. And Fiesta is back, and that means all the parades will run as scheduled for the first time in two years. Yes, a fan favorite happens on the San Antonio River with the Texas Cavaliers River Parade. R.J. Marquez is live down at the marina with a loud preview. R.J. <laughs> Yeah, guys, a loud but really exciting preview this morning from the uh, marina down here below Biga on the banks in downtown San Antonio. Um, and, of course, we're talking about the Texas Cavalier River Parade, which is set to hit the waters on Monday. And joining me now is Barry Kern. He is the president and CEO of Kern Studios. They are in charge of putting all this stuff together, all these amazing floats that are going to hit the Riverwalk. Barry, thank you very much for being with us this morning. So tell people, tell our viewers what they're going to see here when these amazing floats hit the Riverwalk? Well, first of all, uh, happy fiesta. I mean, it's it's incredible cultural event that you guys do here in San Antonio. It is wonderful. And what you're going to see is props and figures and three-dimensional pieces that haven't been, you haven't seen on the Riverwalk before. And so this parade that the Cavaliers, and what a great tradition the Cavaliers have of putting this parade on, on the first Monday of a fiesta, uh, it's going to really be exciting. And I think that anybody that shows up, they'll be very happy because they're going to see things that they've never seen before. Right. So we're standing in front of one of these floats here, and I saw some people working on this earlier. You mentioned LED lights. Kind of describe what we're seeing right here with this particular well, so float. We're not quite. We're, right now, we're, we're still programming all the lights, but everything will be put together. We've got LED lights. Um, that will be changing colors for each. And, and this year's theme is tes Texas al fresco, right? Texas outdoors. Every float is going to be a different theme and a different idea of what things that go on in Texas, right? You know, Texas barbecue, Texas hunting, Texas fishing, all the fun things. Of course, this is the Alamo. Uh, you know, and so each float will have its own personality, its own lighting. Um, it's, it's, every float is, is, is quite different. It's going to be a lot of fun. So just kind of explain the process of bringing these floats in because we were talking a little bit before we started our live shot. There's going to be a lot more of a 3D element to this. We're seeing a lot more. We see a deer over there. We see a pig back here. A lot of the outdoor kind of feel in Texas. And it's my understanding that you had to bring in some semi trucks just to bring all this stuff uh, to San Antonio this year. Yeah. So we brought in. So we have we do have experience here in San Antonio. Uh, we do parades out at uh, Six Flags here. But. We move all the stuff that when we bring in, we come in in 18-wheelers. Um, when we initially started doing this, we've got our third truck is on the road right now coming here, full of props and figures, um, big 18-wheelers full. So we've got a lot of stuff uh, to put out on display on the floats. A lot, of, Every float will have at least uh, two great three-dimensional props on it. And that's kind of what we, we, we really excel in is uh, the 3D props and the sculptures and the way that they look so realistic. All right, so we cannot wait. There's going to be more than 50 floats here at this year's Texas Cavaliers River Parade. It's going to be bigger and better than previous years. And, of course, we're going to get people back. So tickets are available online right now. You can go to ksat.com, get those tickets, or check out the Texas Cavaliers websites and social media channels for tickets as well. We're also going to have this live on KSAT 12 Monday. It's going to be a lot of fun. Cannot wait, guys. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. RJ, well done in a noisy subterranean yes. marina, my, my friend. <laughs> yes, very nice. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. But it's a lot of fun. The work is getting done here. It's going to be a good time. All right, R.J. Marquez, live at the Marina downtown. Thank you, R.J. Yes, thank you. We're excited about all the parades being back We are. Year. I'm still kind of pinching myself that we're here. I know. Uh, we've been talking about it for two years, and it feels like, two months just kind of getting ready for the reality of it, you know? It really does feel that way. Yeah. And I'm glad the weather's working out for tonight. It really does. Now, you were looking ahead to Monday night and had some question marks there, and I know uh -oh. you'll get to that later as well. Yeah, there are some question marks, unfortunately. But, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes these things time out well. Mm -hmm. We get the parade in, and then maybe we get some rain. It's the best of both worlds. We'll see how that works out. We're going to detail that forecast here in just a second. First, we've got to talk about today. Big swing in temperatures. It got down to 47 this morning. We think temperatures will make it up to 82 this afternoon. It's that dry air that does it for us, right? So we make it up to 82. That is a 35 degree temperature swing today. So it's jackets to t-shirts. It's one of those type days here in South Texas. Let's look at the time lapse because it uh, was a beautiful sunrise. Uh, we had clear skies and uh, boy, it doesn't get much better than that. 
Temperatures at this hour, 58 degrees. West southwesterly winds are light, thank goodness. And we're going to see light winds through most of today. Dew point is down to 40, so the air is still relatively dry. Temperature wise, 55 in Austin, 55 Gonzales. Most of us have made it into the 50s with a few 60s down to the south locally. 52 Boulevardy, 53 Canyon Lake, 55 in New Braunfels, 55 right now in Castroville. Everybody looking at clear skies. Our forecast today, by noontime, we're up to 70 here in town. Still some 60s in the hill country, but by the time we get to 4 or 5 o'clock, 80s will be uh, pretty widespread here. 83 Somerset, 81 in Elmendorf today, 81 Floresville. will be up around 84 in Pearsall this afternoon. What about Fiesta Fiesta? Are you heading out there this evening? Looks good. 80 degrees at 4 o'clock, so maybe a little warm, but it gets fairly comfortable by the time we get into this evening. Sunset is at 752, and by the time things are winding down, we're looking at 65 degrees. Here's the big picture. Storm system working off the east coast. There is more severe weather expected today out ahead of it. Not as much as yesterday, but still some severe weather nonetheless. There is some snow on the back side of it. Places like Chicago seeing a few snowflakes flying this morning and this storm system moves away from us. High pressure is building in and that means really comfortable weather for us. Light winds as we mentioned and then as this scoots east tomorrow the winds pick back up uh, out of the south. Uh, of course that's not good considering our our current situation with drought. Humidity will st still be low tomorrow, so we'll still have a, th a threat for some grass fires. Here's a look at the latest drought monitor. This just came in this morning. Not much has changed here other than we're seeing the exceptional drought spread a little bit further east. A lot of South Texas now is within this drought. 88% of Texas now in drought. So rain would be a really good thing. There is a little bit in the forecast, as we mentioned as we get into Monday. Saturday, a little storm system works across the middle part of the country. Tries to bring a weak front through, doesn't do anything for us. It's this next system that comes in on Monday, digs a little bit further south, and I think by Monday evening we have about a 30 to 40 percent chance of rain. I think probably Monday night is our best chance, maybe seeping over into Tuesday morning as well. We'll see how it times out. Uh, but there is a chance for some storms, and this time of year we have to watch out for a few strong storms. So, seven day forecast. Here's how it looks. 84 tomorrow, winds do pick up. 87 Saturday, some morning clouds. 88 Sunday, some nice mornings there. 83 Monday, with a 30% chance of rain, we up that to a 40% chance of storms Monday night into Tuesday morning. And then look at those numbers Tuesday and Wednesday, low 90s. But before you get too worried about Battle of Flowers next week, looks like we could get a front and some cooler temperatures by the end of next week. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 927. A local judge is seeing something disturbing in juvenile court. More teens in San Antonio committing crimes. The number of juveniles on probation is also increasing here in Bear County. But is this the, is this the worst it's ever been? Patty Santos breaks down numbers and tells us what's being done to keep teens out of jail. Trends are that violent crime is on the rise right now with juveniles. Judge Carlos Quesada is seeing the trend each day in the faces of the boys and girls under 18 years old that find themselves caught up in drugs, burglaries, robberies, even murder, and end up in courtrooms like his. Is it because of COVID? Is it because the population is growing? I do not know, but there is a, a lot of crime going on. The specialty court helps juveniles on probation and it's getting busier. The total number of referrals for violent crimes was up in 2021 with 448 cases. That's higher than in 2020 when the specialty court saw 402 cases, but it's not the highest we've ever seen. In 2019, the same court made 575 referrals. We're taking it very, very seriously. So seriously that Judge Quesada says specialty courts like the gang court, which he started about three years ago, are having an impact. Teens on probation are required to meet regularly. And we're implementing programs like this to keep them on, keep them on the right path. And on top of that, what you will see um, is that the recidivism rate is down. That's the truth. The intervention that we are doing is working. But it takes everyone in the system to buy into the programs, including probation officers, for all of it to come together. And what this court has taught me was that um, we're going to work with these kids and we're going to build a relationship with them and, and we're going to earn their trust. 
He was only 14, growing up without a father, looking up to hardcore criminals and in a gang. It all landed him here. Coming up tonight on the Night Beat, we're going to tell you what finally changed. Just tell me that it's not, it's not worth it. It's only going to get you either in jail or dead. All right, there's much more ahead on GMSA at 9. A look at how the Texas National Guard is using all their tools to make sure wildfires stay under control around Texas. And the morning commute is lingering. We've got a disabled vehicle or an accident right now. Hero truck out there at I-10 near Callahan at the ramp to 410. That's got folks merging to get onto that exit ramp itself. That's just one of several spots we are watching for you. Just about 9.33, we are following breaking news right now. San Antonio Fire Department is at an apartment complex on the city's northwest side. We are being told that evacuations are underway right now. This is happening at a complex on Ingram Road near Culebra Road. We have a crew on the scene trying to get more details, and we will update you as soon as we get more information. Yeah, we'll keep you posted right there on KSAT and KSAT.com. Well, you have to tip your hat to all the people fighting the Das Goat Fire out in Medina County. It started Friday, and despite very windy conditions, it is, a, at last check, 95% contained. Unfortunately, there's still a high risk for more fires, and it's keeping members of the Texas Army National Guard busy. A pilot tells Lee Waldman that they're ready for anything. Through the smoke, you see them. Black Hawk helicopters flying high, dropping buckets of water onto the Dos Goat fire. It is a very crew coordinated uh, operation. Ryan Cantini, a UH-60 Black Hawks instructor pilot with the Texas Army National Guard, flew the Medina mission over the weekend. We could almost see it from Austin where we took off. Uh, so we knew it was going to be big when we got there. Four Blackhawks with four crew members each, two manning the Bambi bucket for strategic water drops of 660 gallons below. We trained for a bunch of different ways to drop water. Um, but then every time you go back and get water and come back to a fire, it's going to look completely different. In the High Mountain Ranch subdivision where the Dos Goat fire burned most intensely, the home saving efforts are clear. That was just from a one of the helicopter water drops from the pilots that just so skilled making sure that it you know didn't damage the house, but absolutely made sure the fire didn't get to it. That precision was put to the test. Large smoke plumes make for difficult flying conditions. Cantini explains they also have to be hyper aware of the other aircrafts flying around them and the people on the ground. Especially the firefighters on the ground. Those guys are there on the front line and really what we do is to support them. While their mission in Medina County is through, fire danger across South Texas is high, reaching critical levels today. It's not even really fire season yet, so uh, to see this kind of activity already, we know it's going to be pretty busy. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. And taking a look outside with live cam, very pleasant out there. We're at 59 degrees. About as good as it gets for late Mar March. And well, now we're heading into early April. This is great weather. We're going to have a good stretch today, tomorrow. Maybe a little more humidity by the weekend, but still pretty nice. I want to take you on a tour around the country. Look at these numbers. 30 in Omaha, 31 Minneapolis, 24 International Falls. That's some of that cooler air that we're feeling here, but it's much colder to the north. 25 Bismarck, 28 Cut Bank. Also across the northern tier states, they got a good look at the Aurora Borealis last night. Magnetic storm came towards the earth, uh, made for some beautiful, beautiful scenes up there. If you've seen any of the pictures, uh, really the only warm spot this morning is down there across parts of South Florida. Most of the country dealing with uh, some of this cooler and drier weather. Now with uh, the dry air in place today, we really don't have the winds, but we still have some dry conditions out west. They're going to keep the red flag warning in effect. There's still a fire danger there, not as high as it was yesterday, but still there nonetheless. Forecast for today, Texas up to 70 by noontime. Sunny skies, you see the light winds there out of the northeast, anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. We top out close to 82 this afternoon. And then fall back down into the 70s this evening. 78 by 7 p.m., 72 by 8 p.m., and down to 70 by 9 p.m. Guys. Thank you very much, Justin. What a difference 36 minutes makes. You know, we're joining you at 9 right as the morning commute is winding down. And we tend to see problems. And now here we are just about 37 minutes later, and things look much, much better in several of those problem spots around town. There's 10 at 35. Speaking of traffic, 
Don't forget, if you plan to hit the St. Mary's Strip this weekend, especially tonight, you want to take an Uber. Barriers are in place to make sure drivers stay out of nearby neighborhoods. That's all going to start at 7 p.m. And this comes after concerns of violence and trash from residents of the Tobin Hill Neighborhood Association. The barricades will extend from East Magnolia Avenue near Candlelight all the way to Demos Greek Food off of East Ashby Place until April 3rd. However, this is not a 24-7 situation. The less than half a mile stretch will be closed from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. each day. And Major League Baseball is officially back despite a previous work stoppage that had threatened to stop the season. In this week's KSAT Kids edition of Kids Want to Know, elementary students interviewed Greg Elliott, Director of Field Operations with the San Francisco Giants. What material do you use to fix the field? If we have any grass material that we need to replace, we take it out, add some sand underneath it to level it out, and then reinstall sod so that we can turn it around quickly. Uh, on the mounds and plate area around home plate where you would dig in as a hitter or where the catcher stand, we use a packing clay. It's uh, from Mississippi. It's a product that's more like a, a uh, it's, it's a black clay. It's a real heavy clay. We use the same clay on the mound. And then in the surrounding areas, the brown stuff, you look behind me like the infield there. That is more of a uh, sandier material, and that's an infield mix. And then on top of that, on our warning track, just primarily lava cinder that's been screened and, and has a certain gradation to it. Now, student mud, kid certified learning. Yay! Yay! For the full version of this interview, you can head over to our website at kset.com and look at the kids section. Just about 939, 59 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. Okay, so what are the chances that the Spurs make it into the playoffs after, okay, barely losing last night's game? David explains next. Hi, welcome back. It's 942. We are ready for Fiesta. And looking forward to the good weather as well. I, I can't wait to see what crowds are going to be like tonight. I know. I think it'll be big crowds. And mm -hmm. I was kind of looking at some of the events, how the weather's, you know, looking. The river parade's a little questionable, right? And then I looked down the line to Battle of Flowers. Uh -huh. We're going to get some warm temperatures right a couple days before Battle of Flowers. Uh -huh. But if everything works out as planned, we get a front through, maybe a little cooler for Battle of Flowers. Uh -huh. Aha. That might good. work out so well. we'll see. Uh, we, we do need some rain too. We know that. We showed you the drop monitor earlier. Take a look at this map. This is the percent of normal when we're talking about precipitation. Uh, San Antonio has only seen about 21%. By the way, this is over the last 30 days. Notice places like Eagle Pass and Catua not doing really well at all. Uh, no rain, so we got 0% of the normal here in San Antonio. As we mentioned, only 21%, 2% Del Rio Valley. So it's this area especially, especially that uh, need some rain desperately. We're going to try to get a little bit in the forecast as we get into Monday, as we talked about. Dew points thankfully climb a little bit too over the weekend. So that helps us some with that fire threat, but it's still going to be there. And I think tomorrow could be another problematic day because winds pick up and we still have some pretty dry air in place. And obviously, the drought is still very much in place. Outside right now, we've got clear skies and 58 degrees at the airport. West southwesterly winds at about three miles per hour. Dew point is at 40. 56 in Kerrville, 55 New Braunfels, 62 Pleasanton, 62 in Catula. Most of us here around Bear County in the 50s at this hour, but we'll be in the 60s very quickly. By next hour, you'll see a lot of 60s here on the map. 55 Helotus, 55 right now in Bandera. And the forecast by noontime takes us, in, it takes us into the 60s and 70s. 73 Castroville, 66 in New Braunfels noontime. And by this afternoon in the low 80s. A picture perfect day, sunny skies, less wind this afternoon. You really can't beat that. Uh, 82 Pleasanton, 82 Kennedy, places like Gonzales will be at 76 a little bit later today. So Fiesta Fiesta gets underway at four. Uh, temperatures should be right at about 80 degrees and then they'll fall off into the 70s and 60s. Low humidity, clear skies, sunset around 752 this evening. Here's the uh, radar and satellite showing that we do still have some severe weather across parts of Florida this morning. Front continues to progress east. There will be a little bit more severe weather today, not as much as yesterday, thankfully. And then as we go up the east coast, big storm system here, snow on the backside, 
Places like Milwaukee, northern suburbs of Chicago getting some snow this morning, and this is sweeping into parts of Detroit. That's where the cold air is. Thankfully, uh, we're not getting that cold of air, but we will see another chilly morning coming up tomorrow. A little piece of energy passes to our north on Saturday. That brings through a weak frontal boundary. It doesn't really do much for our forecast. But down the line, we got a dip in the jet stream. This is Monday, Monday evening. This is when rain chances start to come back into play. Right now, a 30% chance, and I think the best shot will be Monday night into Tuesday morning, but the timing still needs to be worked out a little bit. And it's that time of year, too, where we have to worry about the threat for some severe weather. There is that chance there. So let's look at it here on the seven day. We'll go 82 today, 84 tomorrow, 87 Saturday, 88 Sunday. It will be a warm weekend despite some morning clouds potentially on Saturday. 83 Monday. Uh, right now we're putting a 40% chance of storms in there Monday night, Tuesday morning. I think that is the window where we'll have our best shot. The question is, will we be able to fit the river parade in there? And again, that, that, uh, those details still need to be worked out. 90 though on Tuesday, 91 Wednesday it gets very warm. And then I mentioned that cold front right now scheduled for Thursday, and that would bring the cooler air in for Friday of next week. So we'll keep you posted there on how things work out for all of our Fiesta events. Keep us posted, Justin, because yep. if you mess up Battle of Flowers forecast, you have to deal with stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know how okay, that yeah. goes. Yeah, I do. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll, make, I'll make it happen. <laughs> all right. Run. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, sir. Let's talk Spurs. All right. The word I kept hearing in the newsroom this morning was heartbreaker. Yeah. Heartbreaker. Last night was a tough one, wasn't it, David? It's yours. Yeah, hey, Steph, RJ's not here. You want to come help me? <laughs> <laughs> well, RJ is much more knowledgeable than I am. I'm just going to be Still, standing behind you saying, This is your chance. Go. Come on. <laughs> this is my oh, I get it. They lost, so you don't want to come over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the part where I come over, David. <laughs> oh, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, if they'd have won, you'd have been dancing on the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I but understand. but they, they did a good it. job. Except I mean, for that last play, it was really good. But what did Coach Pop say about the last? I know, right? I might as well go over there. Yeah, go. But even Coach, yeah. even Coach Pop. You don't have anything to say, but you're sitting here talking all about it. Yeah, well, okay. okay, okay. But Tell even, us what you think. Even Coach Pop. What did he say? He said that, I mean, usually he's pretty hard on the Spurs. Uh -huh. And this time he said that they, you know, they kind of put it all out there in the court. And at that, you know, that last play was, you know, wasn't basically, it was like not that big of a deal is what he was said. Right, right Mark? Back it was basically up. like, if, if this is the worst thing that yeah. happens to you in your life, move on. Move it's, on. Oh, That's it's what just it was. basketball. On. The whole pop philosophy. So yeah. pop with life philosophy on us after the loss. Right. I yeah. All right. Well, but if Coach Pop is talking that yeah. way, then, you know, we should take a back seat. And, yeah, you see, know. It, we'll, we'll hear from him in just a second. So it wasn't oh, okay. one of those 30 okay. seconds show up, say a few words, and then walk no. out. No, Pops. no, right. not this time. So let's go to the second half for you. So the Spurs were down 18, and they came back. Wait, don't leave. <laughs> commentary to do. So there's uh, a nice play by Kelton Johnson. So we're going we're gonna to get to the big play here in a second. The Spurs, once again, were down 18. Look at that play. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. That's it right there. Here it is. That's it right there. Kelton Johnson uh, layup off the glass, rim, rim. Ah, uh, not going to happen. So they came back from 18 down. DeJounte Murray had another 33-point night, which is a tying career high. But this, this just, yeah, this hurts. Even Justin was like, oh, man, I was heartbroken. Mm, that's, it is heartbreaking. And that's a drawn-up play that should have fallen, right? It should yes. have. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, you know, you got to give the defense a little bit of credit. They got right up in him. And it was just, uh, this was one of those bang, bang things. And it, uh, it looked good. Went around and then. It could have gone in just as easy as it went out. And yeah, Justin said he was screaming at the TV too, right? So, all right, so let's let's hear from Pop, Steph. See what he had yes. to say about it. Yes, then you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> Great stuff in the second half. Uh, took care of the ball better, executed better. Uh, DJ set a hell of a screen to get JR the three at the end. Uh, executed the last play very well. It didn't go in. And like I told him, if that's the worst thing that ever happens in your life, you're going to live a pretty easy life. Uh, so get over it and come and play Friday. There you go. There See, you go. Expert analysis by you. No. <laughs> See, that's exactly what you said, what he said, and he said what he said. No, I got a little help from Mark. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> he was, was around that neighborhood. But when Steph says get over it, it's so much sweeter and nicer. <laughs> it's a lot better than when yeah. Pop says it, huh? So what's our playoff scenario at this point, Dave? Yes. So right now, mm -hmm. the Spurs have dropped the half game behind the Lakers, so the Spurs are down in the 11th spot, the Lakers in the 10th spot. The Lakers play... The Jazz tonight. 
Oh, jazz okay. Are okay. A tough team. So yeah. we'll see if the Jazz really and they're playing in Utah. Okay. So if the Lakers lose, then we're back to the tenth spot because remember we have the tiebreaker with the with the Lakers. The okay. Will be the same, but yeah. we have the tiebreaker. So we're and then back there's to the Friday's game. And then there's there's Friday and Sunday, and they're playing Portland. And what do you know about Portland? That well, it looks good. For us. For us. Right, Portland's right. terrible. So hopefully. Yeah, Portland's yeah. bad. They're kind of yeah. mailing it in. Hopefully they'll continue to, so, to be that way. So, and that's your analysis on Portland? They'll, they'll still be bad? Well, we so. hope. You know, I mean, not to be mean to Portland. Well, and eh, truth be told, win. you're going to a game this weekend because yes. tomorrow is your birthday, yeah. Stephanie oh. Serna. I'm yes. not going to be here, so I wanted to say happy birthday oh, now. So happy you. birthday. Thank and we told you. the Coyotes to come give you birthday gifts and <laughs> no, coyote kisses and everything on your on your big birthday No, I'm, at the game. I have not told the Coyote. I'll to tell the coyote. just be there cheering on hey. the Spurs and hoping for a win, right? Coyote, if you're watching. You gotta find her tomorrow. It's her birthday. <laughs> My daughter's gonna be like, get out of the way. I wanna talk to the coyote. <laughs> oh, thank you, Justin. <laughs> All right, so thank tomorrow you. it's uh, it's Portland, and then Sunday it's Portland. So hopefully the Spurs, because Portland, I, I was talking about how they're mailing it in. They got a bunch of guys out. It, it doesn't seem like they're really trying to get back into the playoff hunt because they're like three or four games out of the right. spot. Yeah. So, so it, the Spurs have a great chance in the next two nights to kind of solidify that, that 10th spot. Hey, Sounds good. David, so a viewer sent us a video last night. Chuck Carreau and the Coyote were doing a best of Will Smith films. Did you and the Memphis oh, no. Grizzlies you saw, you saw it. Uh, mascot came up and slapped the Coyote during the presentation. I'm How rude. I'm not <laughs> did that person get kicked out or did they get to stay in winter? Well, I don't know. It wasn't a person, it was a grizzly. It was a grizzly. Oh, the yeah. grizzly yeah. slapped him? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it was mascot on mascot violence. <laughs> <laughs> it was. All right, David, thank you. Okay. Steph, I okay. can, I, oh, yeah. can I get her jump? back? So, I can know. I get her back? Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> if RJ doesn't show up anymore, well, then, you know. <laughs> it's, it's all Steph. He's doing Fiesta stuff. Yeah, That's well. right. Too bad for him. <laughs> and she matches the center stripe and yeah, the Fiesta yeah. retro. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know. RJ doesn't yeah. wear that kind of colors. Oh, we need uh, to talk to him about that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's going to be like, I do. <laughs> 952, about 59 degrees. <laughs> we'll be right back. And we're going to take you back to that uh, live picture there that we were talking about earlier off of Ingram Road near Culebra. This is on the city's northwest side. This is an apartment complex fire. That's right. You're looking live right now. Fire crews out there at the scene. Folks, this is a big alarm fire. If I heard correctly, this became a two alarm blaze. We don't know a lot of details right now, except for the call came out just before 9 a.m., 8.56 to be exact. There are 37 San Antonio fire units on scene. This is happening at an apartment complex in the 7500 block of Ingram Road at the intersection of Petrenko and Cota Labor. It looks like one entire uh, apartment building out there has been heavily, heavily damaged. I mean, the roof is just gone it's in that shot. There. Yeah, you can see the smoke right there in that shot. We do, as you can see, we do have a crew on the scene and we're going to be getting more information from them probably within our noon show. And you can also check online at kset.com. Yeah, look for very latest from our crews coming up. All right, that does it for now. Uh, we'll keep you posted on that. Have a great first day of Fiesta San Antonio. Bye, guys.